This talk has a very special place in my heart. I took my single CLP. Singles? Singles? I took my single CLP uh, back in 2000. When I was 12. Very old. No, but that was a long time ago. That was a long, long time ago. I, that's when I took my single CLP. And the first three talks, I don't know if you guys, who's been here for the first three talks? Talks, yes. So, first talk was given by Toffee, right? Yes. And it was all about um, the fact that God, you know, um, that we were created in to be with God in all eternity, in the Garden of Eden, right? And then through our sins, like we can never, God can never stop from loving us, but we turn our backs on God for our sins, and we can turn our back on God. And that's why we were thrown out of the Garden of Eden, right? And then the second talk was given by uh, we have Buddy, right? Buddy from uh, San Diego. Yeah. And he talked about the fact that even when God threw us out, God God threw us out of the Garden of Eden, he also sent, he also had a plan to bring us back to him. And that plan was Jesus Christ. Right? And then the third talk, Brother Vince came and he talked about what it means to be a Christian. What's the main point of that talk? It means that if we, because of Christ, we are adopted sons and daughters of God the Father. And then the talk describes God the Father. And, and the talk talks about God the Father being someone that we can trust. Someone that's always providing for us. Someone that loves us. Someone that is ready to forgive us. Right? And if that is really our belief and that is our Father, then the resulting, the resulting emotion at all times is peace. That's talk number three. Right? And I didn't care about the first three talks. They went like completely over my head. Why? Because I knew but there was a problem in my life and in the world. Right? Like, I looked at the world and I saw that there was a gap between what I was living and what people were living and what what I felt was something out there. Right? But I, I grew up in the Philippines. I grew up from kindergarten to graduate, graduating college in a Catholic school. Catholic private school where they, of course, um, I mean, even though I took management engineering in college, they still, I still had to take theology as part of my core curriculum. Mm -hmm. Like in high school, religion is part of, is part of life, right? So I thought, you know, arrogantly, I thought I knew about the first three talks. I knew that God, God loved us and that God came from, God created us, men and women, in His image and likeness to be with Him. I knew that we turned our backs on Him. I knew that the, the way that He was going to bring us back to Him was through Jesus Christ. I knew that because they've been teaching, pounding that into my brain ever since I was a kid, like in Catholic school. But so what? So what? It doesn't matter if I knew that God loved us and I was supposed to be with God. It didn't matter that I knew that Jesus Christ came so that I can be brought to God. It didn't matter that I knew that through Jesus Christ I could have a life of peace. It didn't matter because I didn't know how to get there. That's why the first three drops just blew over my mind. So what? They painted a nice picture, a great picture. Right? And they said that we yeah, were supposed to be there. That's the life that we were meant to live. I love this song. It's from Switchfoot. Anybody know Switchfoot? Is that an old band? No? Okay, Switchfoot. Hello. Meant to Live is one of my favorite songs. Uh, dreaming about providence and whether mice or men have second prize. Maybe we've been living with our eyes half open. Maybe we're bent and broken. We were meant to live for so much more. Have we lost ourselves somewhere we live inside? We want more than the world has to offer. We want more than the wars of our fathers. Everything inside seems for second life. So here I was living a life, and I knew deep down inside, I, there was something more to life. And I knew from, from grade school, from kindergarten, that I wasn't meant to live this, this life of pain and hurt, of stress, of sorrow. I was supposed to live a wonderful life with God. I knew that, but so what? So what? Because I did not know how to get there. I love this movie. Punchback, 1990s, no? Punchback, right? Um, I love this because of this song. Uh, especially now, I know that I'm supposed to live a wonderful life, and I look out, and I see people that do live that life. Especially when I got introduced into the community. So in the 2000s, I get into the community, they give these wonderful talks, these first three talks that just go over my mind, go over my head, because I can't, I can't really relate to it, right? Because I didn't know how to get there. But then I also saw these people, met these people that I thought, we're living that life that I was meant to live. Where now I was bothered because then I understood, wow, okay, so 
So here comes Jesus Christ painting this wonderful picture, and then some people have already figured it out. Some people I saw and met were living that life, that we were meant to live, that so much more, right? That they found themselves. And so some people in community were able to figure out how to get there, right? I love this song. It goes, so many times out there, I've watched a happy pair of lovers walking in the night. They had a kind of glow around them. It almost looked like heaven's light. I knew I'd never know that warm and loving glow. Though I might wish with all my might, no face as hideous as my face was ever meant for heaven's light. But suddenly, an angel has smiled at me and kissed my cheek without a trace of fright. I dared to dream that she might even care for me. And I think it is the night. My cold dark tower seems so bright. I swear it must be heaven's night. So I knew somehow deep inside me that some people have figured it out. Then came talk number four. Talk number four. And that was it. That was the road map. Finally, there's this wonderful, wonderful picture painted of a wonderful life. Right? And then talk number four comes. The how I can get there. Two things about a roadmap. Number one, when somebody calls me and says, hey bro, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm visiting and I want to get to Disneyland. How do I get there? What do I ask him? Where are exactly, exactly. Where are you coming from? Absolutely. You can't give them Google, right? Google Maps, MapQuest, right? You can't give good directions to some place if you don't know where somebody's coming from. So the first thing about roadmap, you have, to, you have to know and you have to be honest with where you're at. Number one. Second thing about roadmap, if I tell you that going to Disneyland from here, you have to take a five north, is that correct? Yes. And exit harbor, will you get there if you take the five south? No. Will you get there if you take the five south and then the 76 east, and then, I don't know, 15 south of there. No. Absolutely not, right? Inherent in every road map is a list. It's not just a way to get somewhere, but implicitly, there are other things that we have to give up if we want to get a busy map. Inherent in a road map, right? But nobody, nobody complains about that when you give them a road map, right? Um, I, I want to go to Disneyland, right? What do I take from here? The five. But I want to take the one. They heard, I heard it was a scenic route, right? Yeah, but um, you're not gonna get there, right? You have to get the, you have to go to the five, right? Yeah, but I wanna, I wanna pass by San Diego. Like, you're not gonna get there. Right? If you wanna go to Disneyland, take the five north, right? So number one, roadmaps to be able to get somewhere and to be able to have good directions, we need to know where we're at, right? Second, when we get directions, implicitly there are things that we have to give up and for a goal, if we really want to get to where we want to go. Yeah? Good? Yes? So what was the roadmap? Roadmap is in Mark 1, 14-15. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Double action response. It is not repent or believe. It's not um, one or the other. It is both. Repent and believe. So now, we were created to be with God, the Father, in all eternity. We turned our backs on Him. He has a plan to give us, bring us back to Him, to sum up everything in Christ. Right? That is who Jesus Christ is. He offers us this life. What is it? It's a life of peace. Life of peace is really what He offers us. That's talk number two. And then talk number four, how do we get there? Repent and believe in the gospel. Right? It is, it is a double action response. What do I mean? It means that we need both. Right? We can't just repent without believing. And we can't just believe without repenting. Right? Why not? Just quickly summarize. You repent and you don't believe. And your new life will just go away. 
You just revert back to your old ways. You believe without repenting will just corrode your beliefs. And you just end up not believing Jesus Christ as a Savior anyway. It has to be both. Right? Where are we? Let's go, um, let's talk about repentance. What is repentance? Repentance is from the Greek, I don't know why the speakers do this, right? But they always refer back to the Greek word for something. The Greek word for repentance doesn't even sound like repentance. It's called metanoia, right? Uh, it, it means change in direction or literally change of mind, right? It is not, so repentance is not just a simple confession of wrongdoing. It is a change in direction. And, and in some cases, we want a complete change in direction. I'm going this way, and it's going to lead to a path of hurt, pain, right? Through sin, it's going to lead me to pain, hurt, sorrow, sadness. It's going to lead me to a path where I will hurt other people, and I will continue to hurt other people whether I want to or not, whether I intend to or not, right? And I will turn, change my direction to something else, to the opposite path, which doesn't lead to hurt and pain, which doesn't lead to hurting other people, which doesn't lead to hurting myself. Right? So, metanoia is not just a simple confession, I did something wrong. It is really changing direction to that which gives life. Amen? Amen. Amen? Repentance affects the way you think and act, your attitudes, motives, thought, and behavior. More specifically, repentance means turning away from sin, evil, wrongdoing, and running your own life. So repentance is really not just turning away from sin and wrongdoing, it is also giving Jesus Christ the rain in our lives. The, the keys to our car, the steering wheel to our car. Take me where everyone is with me. That is the end of repentance, right? And when we really are able to give up to Christ the direction that we're taking our lives. Right? Lord, here, take me where everyone is with That is the true end of repentance, right? It includes turning away from double-mindedness and dual-mindedness. I know your works, I know that you are neither cold nor hot, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Right. Repentance includes turning away from double-mindedness and lukewarmness and neglect of our Christian responsibilities. It is not dependent on feelings, it is really a conscious decision to accept only God's righteousness in our lives. It is not being sorry for sin because we are afraid of the consequences. We are sorry for sin because of what it does to hurt our relationship with ourselves, with others, and with God. For example, uh, I, as a kid, I break my mother's favorite boss, right? Yeah. So now I'm scared to admit it. Why? Because I'm going to get grounded, right? That's as a kid. But as an adult, I do the same thing. Why am I? Why am I worried about it? Because it's her favorite. Right? There's a difference. There's a big difference. I'm still worried about the same event, but the reasoning behind it is different. Right? I'm not worried about going to hell, although that's part of the equation. It's really about me hurting, destroying myself, destroying my relationship with my wife and my kid, and destroying my relationship with God. Right? It's different. Repentance is really based on that. It is, I guess, the grown-up version of just being sorry for our sins because of the pains of hell. Amen? Amen? What must we do to repent? Number one, be honest. So I said, what's the first, what's the second thing about the roadmap? Right? No, that's the first thing. What's the second thing about the roadmap? Inherently, you give up other paths. Right? You take five north, you're not taking <coughs> Let me let it go. You're not taking a golden lantern, right? You're taking the Bible. Right? And what's the first thing again? You gotta be honest with where you're at, right? So, number one, we have to admit that we have sin in our lives, right? First and foremost, we call a spade a spade. Don't call it a growth experience. Don't, um, it's not a learning experience. A sin is a sin, right? This is very important, and this is. What's the most important thing to note about this is nobody here on earth is deciding what that sin is. Right? There already is a, a rule book determined by Christ. Those are sins. And we can't change those. Because He's the one that said it. And if we base our religion on Him, 
Now, if you want to base your religion on Randy, then whatever I say is a sin, that's what we believe in, right? But if you want to base our religion on Christ, then we have to base our actions and beliefs on what he said. And he mentions some things, and he says specifically, these are sins, right? And we can't, we can't change that. Why? Because we might not get this way. Right? The one might be a better rock, more scenic route. You might want to go to San Diego so you haven't been there in a long time. But you won't get to Disneyland if you don't follow the road. And part of the road map is exactly what Christ said are sins. Amen? Amen? There are specific sins we need to renounce. Serious sins that are totally incompatible with the relationship with God. I'm not talking about small stuff. I'm not talking about characteristic flaws, character flaws. I'm talking about big things like non-Christian religions. Right? Spiritualism. Of prayer cult, witchcraft, fortune telling, seances, playing spirit of the glass, sexual wrongdoing, sexual wrongdoing. Um, that is the same. That the, the same rule applies whether you're single, whether you're married, or you're homosexual. The same rule applies. Sexual wrongdoing is sex outside of marriage. That's the same rule, right? That's the same rule. I have nothing against homosexuals. But that's the same rule. I have nothing against singles. That's the same rule. I have nothing against couples. That's the same rule. And if I commit sex outside of marriage, that's the same sin as a homosexual act. Right? That's outside of marriage. That's the same sin as premarital sex. That's the same sin. Right? That's the same fire in hell that's going to burn me up anyway. Right? It has nothing to do with our sexual preference. It has everything to do with having sex within the bounds of marriage. That's it. Sexual wrongdoing, sex outside of marriage is wrong. Right? And we have to call that a spade. A spade, a spade, a sin, a sin. I didn't write these rules. This isn't the roadmap from Randy. This is the roadmap from Christ. This is the roadmap from Christ. Right? Why is it, why is it, why shouldn't we water down Christ's roadmap? Really, that's, that's, that's it. We might not get it. If we really want that life of peace, we should follow the right? Lord. And when we water it down, when we, say, when we say it's not a baby, it's a clump of cells, when we say that, when we say it's okay because we're in love anyway and we're going to get married next month, when we say, so long as nobody knows and we're not hurting other people, when we say it's my body and it's my choice anyway, when we say those things, when we water down the words of Christ, we run the risk of not getting to Disneyland because we didn't follow His program. Amen? What else? Serious crimes, murder, rape, kidnapping, robbery, drunkenness, and drugs, or getting, getting stoned on drugs. So we have to be honest. We can't have a good roadmap. Number one thing about roadmaps, we have to know where we're at, right? Uh, how do I get to Las Vegas from LA is different from how do I get to Las Vegas from San Francisco, right? So the first thing, what must we do to repent? Let's be honest. Where are we in our lives, right? What sins do we commit? What sins are our favorite sins that we keep on going back to? Our comfort sins, right? When you're under stress, what sins do you go to, right? Be honest with that. And then Christ, Christ can give you the direction, the proper road method that is specific for you. Amen? Second, exercise humility. Be willing to change. Be willing to receive help from the Lord to change. And don't expect to be able to change all by yourself. Right? Humility. Third, renounce sin. Actively turn away from sin and decide not to do it again. Renounce it. Turn your back on it. Right? Um, turn your back even on the mere occasion of that sin. Don't even, um, one thing that I have found out about myself is I am not strong enough to resist temptation. I am not. I have always been weak. I have always been, the devil has always had his, his way with me. That is my weakness. I am not strong enough to resist temptation. So what do priests tell me when I confess to them? They say, then don't put yourself in the location of sin. Don't <coughs> put yourself in a situation where you'll be tempted. Right? So if you can't say no to temptation, then don't, don't get tempted. Right? Practically speaking, what did they used to tell me? Uh, even my house dad used to tell me this. Then, 
If you're single and you're dating, don't go back to your apartment. Go out. Enjoy movies. Enjoy dinners. Go to Disneyland. Right? If you're really weak and you really want to fix your life according to this roadmap that Christ gave you, then don't go home. Don't go home. Simple as that, right? Renounce sin. Not just sin itself, but renounce the situations that tempt us into these sins. Amen? And then fourth, ask for God's forgiveness. Because God said the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. And also, He also gives us the prodigal son, right? The story of the prodigal son. Everybody familiar with the prodigal son? Right? So basically, there's this son asked for half his inheritance, right? Or half the father's estate, basically, for his inheritance. Goes off, squanders it, and now finds himself poor and uh, working, I think, uh, I think feeding swine. And then he realizes, oh, why don't I just work for my, my father? I mean, his, co his workers even uh, eat a lot better than, than I do, right? So I'm going to go there and say, I have sinned against you and against heaven. Just please, you know, please take me back at me. Let me be one of your hard workers. And then as he's walking, the father sees him. And he runs. The father runs towards him, right? And he embraces him. And he says, um, and he even tells uh, his, his people to bring the robes, bring the rings to kill the fattened calf, right? And that's how much our, love, our God has, has really loved us. Amen? I have been... I understand God the Father's point of view now that I'm a dad. Right? And I understand that I... I don't think anything can ever stop me from loving my daughter. I don't think she can do anything. That's... It, I know there's, you know, when she grows up, there are things that she's going to do that's going to drive me crazy. Is that right? Right? There are things that she's going to do that's going to hurt me and get, get me really mad at her. But I don't think there's anything that she can do to stop me from loving her. Are there parents in the room? Is that true? Is that true? Am I just weird? Or, right? It's true, right? And I don't understand, I never understood that as a single. I never saw my parents' point of view until I became a parent and I understood, wow, this is different. Right? And if I, who am wicked, know to do this, what more will the Father in heaven? And what more will the Father in heaven? If I, who am flawed, if I, who am imperfect, if I, who, who sin day in and day out, if I can, can, if I can do this, right? what more will the Father in heaven? So He, we can never do anything stop Him from loving us. We can hide from His love. We can turn away from His love. We can turn our backs on His love. As our children can do to us, right? But they, they, they can never stop us from loving them. They can't do anything that will stop us from loving them. And we, we cannot do anything to stop God from loving us. That is how amazing our God is. Do I know this? Because they found this in my, you know, in my brain back in, in, in school. No. I know this because I've been through it. And I am amazed it's still when I look at him, even through the, the toughest times in my life, when I look at him, he always stared back with a loving, loving thing. No matter what I've done. And no matter what I've done. It's it's just amazing. Repentance only becomes complete after turning away from evil and accepting Jesus as Lord. Our lives need to come under His management. We need to let Jesus have the run of things. This is impossible to do on our own, right? Accepting Jesus and letting Him be the Lord of our lives requires faith. Faith is a belief in the gospel, which is the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. Faith is belief in both the messenger, Jesus Christ, and the message that he brings. Faith means not just believing with our minds that Jesus is the Savior, but believing in our hearts that he came to be our personal Savior. Faith means having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, who by faith we believe is the Son of God. Right? The Savior, the Redeemer, come to redeem the world and bring the world back up to God the Father. That is what faith is.
faith is a personal act and decision, right? Who knows what this is? Fortune? No, 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 no. No, Yes, it's an in and out burger wrapper. Actually, I think it's the. Um, no, it is the In-N-Out Burger app. It's the Burger app, actually. The Burger app, right? As your mentioned, 320. Uh, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. Right? There's a famous painting about this, right? Jesus Christ knocking on a door, right? And what's the weird thing about the painting? What do you know? No door knock. No door knock, right? So what is, what, is, what is faith? Faith is a definite act. Number one, we must open the door if Jesus is to come into our life. Jesus can't open it because there's no door now. Right? So we must, so he's knocking on our door. It's definite. We have to be the ones to open the door from our side. Right? Second, it is an individual act. We must be the ones to open the door because there's no door now from outside. I would love to open the door for my nephews and nieces. I would love to open the door for my daughter. But I can't because there's no door now on the outside. They're the ones that have to open that door from within out. Right? So it is an individual act. So for you, we would love for you all to come next week. But that's not for us to decide. That's for you to decide. Right? You decide to come back next week. You decide to come the week after. You decide to open the door. Right? We can't do that for you. We'd love to do it for you. We'd love to force that on you. We'd love to force that on our loved ones. But we can't. Right? There is no door knob from the outside. It is deliberate. We do not have to wait for a supernatural light to flash from the heavens, or the emotional experience to take over us, we already know that Jesus came into this world and died for our sins. He is now standing outside the door of our hearts. The next move is ours. It is a deliberate act, and it doesn't need any supernatural event. It is urgent, right? The future is uncertain, and time is passing away. Time is passing away. We live in very troubled times. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Right? In a couple of weeks, after the whole start opening day hype goes down, I'm going to go to the movies and watch Iron Man 3. Right? I might even go and watch Star Trek Into Darkness. Right? Who ever thought that they would never come home from watching that? Right? Get up in the middle of the night, go to, go to a movie house, watch Batman, never go home. Right? Is that Colorado? Right? It is an urgent act. Because we never know what's going to happen. We never know what's going to happen. Right? Can I, can I say that I, I can safely bet that I will not die for a, another 40, 50 years? Absolutely not. Five of my batchmates are already dead. Right? I think three of them because of health conditions. Right? So it's not... It's not that. It's not the 80s or the 90s, 90 year old, 80 year old that I'm waiting for. Absolutely not. 100, 120, not even. Right? I don't know. My time might be tonight. <coughs> My time might be tomorrow. I don't know. My time might be next month. It might be 50 years from now, 60 years from now. I don't know. But all I know is it is uncertain. We never know what's going to happen. So this, this act of opening the door is very, very urgent. Because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't even know what's going to happen on our way home. Amen? Amen? Amen. And it is indispensable. It is part of our double action response. It is the step needed to receive all God has promised. Faith is relying on all God has said. After everything, the one thing that is really needed to get into heaven is faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the Savior, the Redeemer, and belief in the things that he said. That is it. Matthew 14, 25 to 29. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. <laughs> During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said. And they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. So Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. Began to walk on the water toward Jesus. Right? What faith is not? Faith is not just a feeling. We accept God's word as truth no matter what we feel. Right? It is 
not just wishful thinking. It is not based on illusions or personal desires. It is not an opium where we think that Jesus Christ's way is going to save us. You know, um, it's, it's, going, it's a release from the problems of this world. It is not that. It, it is based on God's word. It is based on God's promises. Right? Remember, what did he say? Um, what did he say in talk number two? He said, I am Lord. I am God. That's what he said. Right? He claimed that he was the Lord. Amen? You remember that? Talk number two? Right? And then we're faced with a trilemma. Talk number two, right? It's either it's false or it's true. I was born November. I was born in um, 1980, right? That's either true or false. Oh, okay. Yes. You got me. 1978. You got me. Yeah, 1978. So it's either true or false, right? If it's false, I either know it's false, which makes me what? A liar. Or I don't know it's false, which makes me what? Crazy. Makes me a lunatic. The trilemma. Jesus Christ said, I am Lord. It's either it's true or false. If it's false, there are only two possibilities, right? It's either he knew it was false, which means he was a liar, or maybe he was a lunatic, and I know it was false. And if those two, two aren't, aren't true, aren't correct, then the last thing remaining is that it's probably true. Right? And then the talk goes on to, to give you um, reasons why we can say that he wasn't lying and why he wasn't lunatic. So maybe he is the Lord, right? So believe, believe that that is that it's not just a feeling, it's not just wishful thinking. It's based on the fact that he said that he is the Messiah. Based on the fact that he said that um, his way, his truth, and his life is going to lead us to an abundant life. It's going to lead us to the promised, planned um, future, um, full of welfare, not woe, that God the Father has always promised us, and has promised us in Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I have a future full of hope for you. Right? Plans for your welfare, not for woe. Right? How? Through Jesus Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right? So know me. I am the way. I will bring you there. Know me. Know my truths. Know the things that I say are sins. Know the things that I say will lead you to Disneyland. Right? Right? And this is that life. I am also that life. When you say you have a life uh, full of, you know, abundance, that is a life in Christ. Right? So, it is, faith is not just wishful thinking. We're not just wishing that there is something else that happens after death. A lot of people say that. We're just thinking that there's something else there because the alternative is that we'll just rot in, in our graves and there is really no soul and no future. No. This is based on what Jesus Christ said. Right? It is also not a blind leap. When Peter stepped on the water, because Jesus invited him to, he relied on what Jesus said because he trusted Jesus would not lie because he knew Jesus had the power to do whatever he said he would do. Before this happened, Jesus Christ actually was on the mount, doing his famous sermon on the mount. Right? And then that was done. And then I think the disciples came up to him and said, let's send them home. It's getting late. We have nothing to feed them. Right? And then Jesus said, well, what do they have? Right? And they gathered the bread and the fish. And they did the multiplication of loaves and fish. And they fed the 5,000, right? And the disciples were here feeding the 5,000, being amazed at what happened. So first they were, they were fed, right? Intellectually, they're listening to somebody like, oh, what are you saying? It's really good. That's amazing. And then there's this miracle that happens right in front of them through their hands, right? So that happens again. And now Jesus, now they go and they, they row. Well, I don't really sail, I guess. They sail across the sea. And now Jesus Christ is coming and there's a storm. And they're, oh my God, he's a ghost. And then Jesus Christ says, come, Peter. That wasn't the first time Peter saw Jesus Christ. That was after that wonderful teaching, Sermon on the Mount. That was after the multiplication of loaves. And he's like, maybe there is something to this guy. I will walk on the water. I, I will come out. Right? It's not a blind leap. Faith is not a blind leap. We're not asking people to believe just because we think God is the best thing in the world. Absolutely not. We're asking people to Go on this journey with us and see if there really is something to God. See if there's something to Christ. Consequences of repentance and faith. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved. It is a promise of salvation from sin, Satan, death. And I used to make the silly mistake of thinking that salvation came after I died. 
right? And then when I started trying to live my single life, I understood that I needed salvation then, right then at that moment. And when Jesus Christ came and He promises to save, He saves us in the here and now. He saves us where we're at. And He will also save us when we die. Right? Salvation is from now until, until eternity. Absolutely. It's not just at the point of death, which we all hope is 50, 60 years from now. Right? It is not then. It is now. So when you're having problems at work, problems at home, Problems with your love life. Why am I just looking at singles? Problems with your love life, right? Even couples. Problems with your love. Problems with your kids. When we're having issues like that, Jesus Christ has promised to save us, salvation from those issues, from those problems, right? Not just after death, right? You and your household will be saved. Promise of forgiveness, right? It is um, promise of forgiveness, internal life with God. I tell you, I, I, everybody knows this. And I tell you, ask and you will. Seek and you will. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks and the one who seeks and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. By right? consequences of repentance and faith, if we repent and believe in the Gospel, we are given a promise of a new life in the Spirit. A new life in the Spirit. And we can even pray for a greater release of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In the Bible, Jesus Christ, through, uh, through the Holy Spirit, details out the fruits. Of the, what does it mean when you say a life in the Holy Spirit? It's too conceptual. It's too up here. Right? What does that mean? Well, in the Bible, it, it, they name certain fruits of having the Holy Spirit with you, right? So now, think about yourself. Think about the things that you go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Right? Do you need these? Do you need any of those? Is it just me? <laughs> right? <laughs> Love, joy. Who needs more joy in your life? Who needs more peace? That's me. Right? Who needs patience? Right? Kindness? No? Especially at work? What about driving? Kindness while driving? Generosity. Right? What about faithfulness? Right? Is that, is that just... Um, I was having a wonderful... I, I was out of town this whole week. Oh, last couple... Last two days. I was having a nice conversation with my um, office mates. One of them is... Uh, believes in a being out there, but not necessarily... God the Father. The other one is a um, Christian through the Latter Day Saints religion, right? Who also believes in well, Christian, believes in Jesus Christ, right? Uh, so we, as the Savior and Redeemer, also, right? Um, and we talked about the fact that you know, um, I know, like I, I, I am so thankful that I, like today, I, I took a day off, uh, half a day since I've been traveling. And I went to Bob the Bob the Builder. Who knows Bob the Builder? Right? No? Discovery, the Discovery Science Center, right? There's the Bob the Builder thing. It's gonna end May 5. So Ginny loves Bob the Builder. Ginny's my daughter, my three-year-old daughter. And she loves Bob the Builder. So we went to Bob the Builder. And instead of studying for the talk, I'm just like enjoying myself in Bob the Builder. Right? So that's why you, that's why the talk's happening, I guess. I apologize for that. But anyway, so I'm living it up, right, with my daughter and my wife. And it it is apparent to me how easy that is for me to mess this life up. To mess it up. Easy. Easy. I told my office mate, you women are so um, lucky. Lucky, right? Because guys are so easy to get. Yes? Is it just, just me? <laughs> <laughs> easy. Easy to get. Guys to fall and mess up our wonderful married lives, that is so easy. I know I have enough evil in me to get that, to lose Ginny for half the year. You know, having to, sh to ship Ginny back and forth between the mom and the dad, the divorced mom and the dad. Some nights will come by, but I won't even see her. But she's with her mom, because that's the arrangement to give the divorced parents. I can easily fall into that life. Why? Because I have enough evil in me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what? Do I need faithfulness? Absolutely. Do I need self-control? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
right? And how do I get that? What's the best way to get that? Life with the Holy Spirit, right? That is a fruit, that is a consequence of re repenting and believing in the gospel. Right? Again, the roadmap. Lord, well, you paint a wonderful life. You even promised me on my wedding day that you came so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. John 10.10, 10. October 10. October, 10th month, 10th day. 10.10, 10. John 10.10, 10. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. You promised me this, Lord. How do I get there? I talk number four. 13 years into community, and it's all about that. Number one, God loves me, right? And He will never stop loving me, right? And second, all I have to do to remain in His love is to repent and believe in the gospel, in Jesus Christ and in the message that He brings. Uh, anybody know this? No, so, so uh, this is, uh, what's Netflix? Anyone like Netflix? Yes, I love Netflix, no? So if you have Netflix, look for Sherlock, right? It's a, it's a BBC thing, so they, they, you might, I had the subtitle on, you know, because I couldn't really understand their, their British accents. So I was watching, there's only, there's only six episodes across two seasons, right? And each episode is an hour and a half long. It's like a movie. It's based on Sherlock Holmes, right? The old, you know, the, the books written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, right? Uh, it's a great... Um, it's wonderful, right? If you guys don't know him, this is the guy in the Hobbit, right? And this is the guy that the evil guy think into Star Trek, right? But anyway, so I, it's, it's an amazing, amazing show, really wonderful show. Uh, I, I, I recommend just watch it. It's really good. It's awesome. It's uh, enriching, actually. Uh, it's actually helped me understand a lot of things. Number one, it helps me, de, you know, decompress. Second, because it's it's really written wonderfully, it kind of enriches my and feeds my, my need for some, you know, some intellectual <coughs> stimulus. So it's pretty enriching, right? So I, I want to say it's worth looking into. So if you have Netflix, just go watch it, right? And don't worry if you're not the kind of person. You just watch like the first couple of minutes, and if you don't care, then just turn it off. It's not like you promised to watch the whole six episodes, right? I'm just saying it's worth looking into. Go look into it, and if you don't like it, then just turn it off. Right? So it's not, it's not a big deal, even if you're not the kind of person. Right? And again, don't worry about it. It's not like you're promising that you're going to watch it. Just try and watch it, because I think it's really amazing, enriching, and worth looking into. What's my point? 2000, uh, the year 2000, I began this journey. Right? And 13 years after, I'm here to say that repentance and belief in the gospel. Right? And then the resultant life in the Holy Spirit. Right, has led to an amazing, amazing life. Amazing. Every day, I look at my wife and my daughter, and I am amazed at how much I have underestimated God's promise of an abundant life. It's an amazing life, right? And, and how am I able to, to, to keep holding on to this? It is through really following Christ's roadmap. Not watering it down, not changing His rules, but following his roadmap, right? Repenting, believing, how to get to Disneyland, I follow that strictly. I make sure that I, 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 I follow what he says are sins and not sins, right? Including, including pro-life, including the non-use of contraception, including the, um, the non-use of um, onanism or withdrawal. That every time my wife and I make love, we make sure that we are open to the gift of life. That we're not, we're not stopping God's love from, from coming forth and becoming a baby at all. That's a tough rule. That's a tough rule because sometimes it leads to no sex, right? Because if you don't want to have a baby, you don't have sex, right? That's a rule. And that's what Christ said. I can't water that down. Why? Because if I do, then I might miss Disneyland. I might not get to Disneyland. That's a tough rule, right? But I follow it. It's amazing. Is it enriching? Absolutely. Every step of the CLP, in retrospect, even though I didn't care back in 2000, was enriching. Every step with every household I've ever had since then, very enriching. It really is worth looking into, brothers and sisters. This is the end of the first module. And I think if you came here at the um, orientation, we would have asked you, come on, look into this. Give us one module and see what it's about. That's the end of that commitment. This is the end of that module. And if we said that, you know, you met your commitment, right? But I promise you, the next two modules are worth looking into. 
I was not the kind of person back in 2000. Absolutely not. If you told me I'd give a talk about repentance and faith, I would slap you in the face and exercise the demon from you. <laughs> right? It's like completely not, not me. Right? But God is an amazing way of courting people and I have fallen in love with Jesus Christ. I have. I have. I have fallen in love with Christ. I have fallen in love with Mama Mary. I have fallen in love with St. Peter of Caspia. Oh, they're amazing people. Amazing people. I have come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior. That He is Lord. That He is Redeemer. And don't worry. If you come back and you don't really feel you don't like it, it's okay. Right? But I'm saying that we're offering something, that Jesus Christ is really offering something genuine, that I have found to be genuine. Please look into it and try it out and see where it takes you. Jesus Christ has given us this roadmap, brothers and sisters. So finally, talk number one, God's love. Talk number two, uh, Jesus Christ comes. And then talk number three, this is the life of peace that Jesus Christ promises. And now talk number four, the roadmap to get there. Repent and believe in the gospel. Do not water down anything that Jesus Christ says. Call a sin a sin. Call a spade a spade. Be honest with where you're at. Right? And He's given you this roadmap. Given us this roadmap. Not just for the, uh, the CLP participants, but for everyone in this room. For every member in this room. No matter how old you are in community, this is still the roadmap. Right? And as with every map, brothers and sisters, X always marks the spot. And Jesus Christ is still the center of that roadmap. He is the summit. He is the source. He is the focus. And if you come to Him on a daily basis and receive Him on a daily basis, I promise you wonders, wonders upon wonders will happen in your life. May God be praised.